Fauci Goo, Yield Scots, the Celtic Podcast. On today's show in Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, that's Let's Try a Little Gaelic, Lesson 20, and it's on simple prepositional pronouns. Now we're going to talk about the fairy flag and the chiefs of Clan MacLeod in our Celtic history segment. We're going to hear about how the Celts are mountain people from way back in everyday Celtic ways. And we're going to hear music from the Selkie Girls, Really Jiggered, Jamie McGeekin, Manrin, or Manrin, and Arthur McCormick, Arthur Cormick from the Alice Guy Gaelic Music and Song CD. So, as always, it's a wee bit of Irish trivia to test your knowledge to start us off. Who invaded Ireland in 1649 in an effort to crush the Catholic Confederation? All right. Check out the Yield Scott Facebook group where you can be a part of the Celtic culture. Post memes, ideas, tips, even criticisms. Kersh maha. All right then, let's get started. Get hulin kachriach gagas cheer for the nyol. Be mochriach kachirig and the nyilan yachyo. which means the poetry of Neil McLeod, followed by Hail to the Isle of Skye, and that's all from the the Isle of Skye Gaelic Music and Song CD. Now, the CD is a celebration of the music from the Isle of Skye, and it features more than just Arthur McCormick, like I said in the intro. 
It features Blair Douglas, Shona McDonald, and Kayleen McLean. It's a great CD if you're looking for that very traditional Gaelic music. And now, on Tom and Fekimich Beck and Gaelic, it's time for Let's Try a Little Gaelic. Now, I'm not an authority on the Gaelic language. I just love learning it. I struggle like most learners, and I just want to help. What I teach comes from well-respected Gaelic teachers, so I hope you will find it interesting, informative, and fun. I always display on the screen what I'm discussing, so let's get to it. Today we're going to be in a 25-part Gaelic lesson with Lesson 20. We're getting close to the end. And it's an introduction to some simple prepositional pronouns. Now, there's a handy chart I'm going to show you, but you can always download at Yield Scott Facebook group. Um, the chart to reference simple prepositional pronouns. Now, if you can memorize these, that would be helpful, as sometimes they resemble other words. And if you know them ahead of time, you know, it's so much the better. Look to the context of the material you're reading, and you should be able to figure out if the word is a prepositional pronoun or not. Now, learning and recognizing prepositional pronouns is key to understanding Gaelic. So take some time and work on these. You can download a copy of this chart, like I said, at Yield Scott Facebook group. Just go to Files and click on ppronouns.png. And you're, this is Lesson 20, so you should have more than enough vocabulary and then more than enough uh, ability to put together a sentence that you can play around with some of these prepositional pronouns and have some fun. All right. Now, I'm going to give you some vocabulary because at the end of this, I'm going to give you some sentences and you're going to need them. Agraig, which is saying, love, hand, a brun, speaking, a nian, the girl, urlin, able. All right. Now, all right, I'm going to run through this chart real quick for you. I'm not going to go through every word for you, but we're just going to run through it real quick so you understand how to use the chart. To far left, you've got your pronouns. Me, u, a, e, shin, shiv, and it, which of course mean I or me, you, he or him, she or her, we, us, you all, and they or them. And then the next column is the addition to make those um, emphatic when you're trying to say you're doing this or I'm doing that all right now at the very top of each column you have the Gallic um, uh, preposition and then of course you have the pronouns over here on the left hand side when those two are combined you know just like any chart you know you cross reference boom you've got the pronoun for me, ak, and me is akam. And the pronoun for u and ak is akit, and so on. So, going down the line, you got air, which means on, an, which means in, ah or as, out of or from, fo or o is from, j is of or off, do is to, Fo is under, gu is to or towards, le is with or by, mu is about, ri is to or with, um, riv is before, har is over, and truv is through. Now if you notice, some of these have a little star, a little asterisk next to them, like air. An, fo, j, fo, um, riv, triv, and those are ones that were night following a noun. All right. So enjoy playing around with these and having fun, but most importantly, learn them, study them, because they will come up. You'll these will be very common. All right, and now we're going to move on to the six sentences at the end of the lesson here. And uh, the six sentences are, uh, starting with number one, 
Avelu Galak Aka, which is a word a sentence you're going to hear a lot. Two is Haigrai Riam. Three is Horgo Dola. Four is Karo Iet Abrun Rishe. Five is Tolom and Nian Sho. Six and Uran Wit Galak Avrim. All right. That's it for Fek Much Beck and Galak today. It was short and sweet, but the more the, long, the further you get along in your Galak, the more you're going to have to be doing more of the research, more of the discovery, more of the, if you're really into learning, you're going to have to be doing a lot more of this work. All right, because all we can do is really give you the material and hope it works out for you. All right, hope you enjoyed it. History break. We're going to talk about the fairy flag and the chiefs of the clan MacLeod. All right, the fairy flag, uh, which is um, Braddock Seath, is a flag which is said to have magical properties. It belongs to the chiefs of the clan MacLeod. It is located in Dunvegan Castle, which is close to the town of Dunvegan on the Isle of Skye in the Inner Hebrides, Hebrides 
of Scotland. Yeah, God forbid I don't say Hebrides. I get blasted on social media for not saying Hebrides. But they're in the, it's on, Alice Guy is in the inner Hebrides of Scotland. The fragile silk uh, flag is about 18 inches squared. Now, the origins of the flag are not clear, and there are a number of legends which say that the flag was a gift from the fairies. Now, one such story was that of a young uh, chief of the clan MacLeod fell in love with a fairy princess and proposed marriage. The king of the fairies initially forbade his daughter's betrothal to a mortal, to a mere mortal, but re uh, relented on seeing her distress. However, he stipulated that the marriage should last no more than one year and a day, at which uh, that time she'd return to the fairy kingdom with no human possessions. Now, the couple were much in love and had a son. On the day that the marriage was ordered to end, the sad couple were rendered apart. One version of the story is that she presented her husband with the fairy flag for protection at the nearby fairy bridge from where she re-entered re the fairy kingdom. Now the fairy princess told her husband to look after their son very well and not let him cry as she would be able to hear him in the fairy kingdom and it would just break her heart. And he agreed. MacLeod kept his word and the child was so well tended to that he never cried. He was so sad about the loss of his wife that his clan decided to hold a huge birthday celebration for him at Dunvegan Castle. And during the night, the nursemaid, looking after the child, left him unattended just to go see the celebrations, to be a part of it. The child woke and began crying. Of course, this was heard by the fairy princess, who came to the castle and comforted her son with a lullaby. She wrapped him in the fairy flag which she had given her husband because it was empowered with magic from the fairy kingdom, and she knew it would soothe her son. When the nursemaid returned and saw the baby wrapped in the flag and heard the sound of a distant lullaby, she took it to the chief and told him what had happened. As time moved on and the child grew to manhood, he told his father that he knew the flag had magical properties, that if ever in danger the clad the clan could use the flag, and if it was waved three times, the fairy folk would come to their aid. However, they could only use it on three occasions, and then the magic and the flag would be lost to the clan. Now, the flag was kept safe in the castle of Dunvegan, where it remains to this day. It has so far been used twice, once to aid in the the clan in a battle with their enemies, the MacDonalds, in order to save them from defeat. The other uh, occasion was when their cattle were dying and the people starving. The flag was waved and the fairies cured the cattle. The clan keeps the fairy flag displayed, of course, for when the time arises when it could be needed once more to save the clan. Angus Ogue, um, he was a Scottish nobleman who was the last independent lord of the isles who was once asked by a visiting nobleman how such two such powerful clans as the MacDonalds and the MacLeods could coexist on the same small isle without constant bloodshed. Now, while he admitted that there had been some bloodshed, it is said that his answer was because of that cursed flag. And that's it for Celtic History Break. These fleeting charms of earth Farewell, your springs of joy are dry My soul now seeks another home A brighter world on high I'm a long time traveling here below I'm a long time traveling away I'm a long time traveling here below to lay this body down. Farewell, kind friends whose tender care has long engaged my love. 
Your fond embrace I now exchange for better friends above. I'm a long time traveling here below. I'm a long time traveling away from home. I'm a long time traveling here below to lay Traveling here below, I'm a long time traveling away from home. I'm a long time traveling here below to lay this body down. To lay this body Alright, that was Long Time Traveling by the Selkie Girls. And now it's time for Everyday Celtic Ways. Today we're going to talk about how the Celts have been mountain people from way back. And as if the Scottish in Scotland and the Scots-Irish in the Appalachian Mountains needed any more connecting them in the history of the world, they have the same mountains. The Scottish Highlands and the Appalachians are the same mountain range that were once connected as the central Pangean Mountains, like millions of years ago. Remnants of this massive mountain range include the Appalachian Mountains of North America, the Little Atlas of Morocco, Africa, Ireland, and much of the Scottish Highlands and part of Scandinavia. The central Pangean Mountains were an extensive northeast-southwest trending mountain range in the central portion of the supercontinent Pangaea, during the Triassic period, which was 237 to 201 million years ago. They were formed as a result of a collision between the minor subcontinents La Russia and Gondwana. During the formation of Pangaea, remnants of this massive uh, mountain range can be found on both sides of the Atlantic and in the North Sea. They include the Appalachian Mountains of North America, like I said, the Little Atlas of Morocco, there's a mountain range in Africa, everybody knows the, that Ireland has all kinds of mountains, and of course the Highlands, packed full of mountains. A number of mountain building uh, periods were involved in the formation of the Central Pangaean Mountains, including the uh, Akkadian, Caledonian, Alleghenian, and Mertunid uh, orogenies. Now, that's kind of a weird word, never everybody uses it, but an orogeny is an event that leads to both structural deformation and compositional differentiation of the Earth's land masses. Wow, that's a mouthful. But I'm going to give you a little uh, picture here, and you can see on both sides of the Atlantic how these mountain ranges would have connected at one time or another. And there will be another picture, of course, where you can see the, the old uh, Pangean continent, the supercontinent. Um, anyway, that's it for Everyday Celtic Ways. That's kind of cool that we have all that in common.
and you To put out the fire that grace in your heart You must recover, you must try to start hey, hey. To put out the fire, that loudness of you The rebel inside you, you feel you must excuse Excuse You can't run from time Or run from your soul This feeling inside There you lost control Control All of your hopes And all of your dreams Live in your heart Not what it seems Amen Put out the fire, put out the fire, put out the fire, put out the fire in you. To put out the fire, the storm in your mind, the river, that ocean, there you need to find, need to find. To put out the fire. Put out the fire, put out the fire, put out the fire in you. Who put out the fire, put out the fire, put out the fire, put out the fire in you. All right, that was Who Put Out the Fire by Jamie McGeekin, my good friend Jamie. Well, that's it for today's show. I hope you liked it. I'm trying to keep it interesting, informative, and fun while showing you the beauty of all things Celtic. Top of Leva Herchin. Now, before I let you go, the trivia question answer. And, of course, it's the dreaded Oliver Cromwell who invaded Ireland in 1649 to crush the Catholic Confederation. Cromwell imposed an extremely harsh settlement on the Irish Catholic population, and this was because of his deep religious antipathy to the Catholic religion and to punish Irish Catholics for the rebellion of 1641. In particular, the massacres of Protestant settlers in Ulster. Hmm, looks like the, the Catholics weren't that great either. Hmm. All right. Remember to check out my YouTube channel, Yield Scott. It's got Learn a Gallic Song videos, Celtic podcast videos, Speaking Our Language videos, Celtic music, and more. My Facebook group, Yield Scott, where you can give me your insights, inputs, and all things Celtic. Martian Levin, Drazda. Bye for now. I'm going to let you go with a tune, though. A good one. Varus Tune by Really Jiggered. Mm-hmm.